Well, hello everyone. I guess I'm live. This might be my uh, last attempt to do uh, a live stream from uh, from home. I'll be uh, uh, leaving course uh, early Monday morning, first to Moscow, and then on to uh, Tashkent, Uzbekistan. I got some family-related business to do, and it's a tedious thing. And some of you may know of the circumstances. Uh, I spell some of the stuff. It's uh, it's about the property of my late father. Anyways, I wanted to share briefly uh, some thoughts on um, the fall of Satan. And um, I've been hesitating even to speak on the subject because uh, I I can't be too dogmatic, and uh, and whenever I cannot be too dogmatic, I sort of I try to. Um, not to say anything because it's uh, it's in my nature to try to speak with uh, uh, authority decisively, and, and and when you when you can't, you just uh, you know what what can I say? Now it's been um, you know the tradition holds that there are two texts. Uh, first of all, there's this idea that Satan, as a created being, had a fall in time, uh, a lapse into sin. Uh, after the manner of Adam in the garden, that there was some point in time that first Satan was created perfect, was the seal of perfection even, but then something happened and he fell, and with him uh, uh, some of the angels who became demons. All right, and two texts seduced for that um, as an evidence uh, for that tradition is, of course, uh, Isaiah 14 and Ezekiel 28. I'm not going to be burdening you with my uh, heavy Russian accent reading from the King James concerning those texts. So first of all, it's uh, I don't have much time at hand right now. Secondly, there are mysterious texts. Uh, but what we can say is that the evidence presented or the data uh, in those texts in Isaiah 14, starting from verse 14, uh, verse 4, I guess the and to the king of Babylon, the, the prophecy concerning the king of Babylon and the king of Tyre in Ezekiel uh, 28, starting from verse 2, around that verse. These texts do not uh, present a, a conclusive, decisive uh, evidence. It may be suggestive, it may be plausible that uh, those texts do refer to the fall of Satan, but... Uh, since there's so many mysterious parts, and, and uh, first of all, you know, the uh, Satan is not called uh, son of the morning star. He's not, um, it would be a strange thing. He does appear, Paul says of Satan, that he may appear as an angel or a messenger of light, but he's not. He's not the son of the morning star. And, uh, and some of the descriptions is just a debatable thing. So the data is um, not conclusive, okay, in those texts. Rather, I'll take you to one very clear text in the New Testament, uh, John 8, 44, concerning Satan. And then we'll try to tie it up with, uh, with some other scriptural and theological considerations, okay? So let me uh, go to straight to uh, John 8, 44. It's in the, one of those discourses with the Jews. And Jesus says, um, saying this to the Jews, unbelieving Jews, Ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is a liar, and the father of it. All right? So... Yeah, now it's better. So the lights came on. So Jesus is basically saying that um, you belong to your father devil and you perform his lusts, his desires. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth. Now it's interesting that um, in our Russian translation, he has not stood in the truth, it says, because that's what it says. Uh, in the original, but it may sound as though there was a point in time where at, 
initially he did stand in the truth, but then he fell from it. He abode not, as in the King James. But the, uh, the truth of the matter is that he has never stood in the truth. In point of fact, one of the uh, modern translations, the NAS, says that he does not stand in the truth. So he is the murderer from the beginning. He's the father of lies. There is no truth in him. So it appears from this uh, rather strong and uh, clear assertion of, of Jesus that Satan is bad from the get-go. That he was, um, you know, he's, he's the murderer from the beginning. When he speaks a lie, he speaks of his own. For he is a liar and the father of it. So there is nothing good in him. And it appears that from the beginning, at least according to Jesus and John 44. Now, the difficulty, uh, the traditional difficulty reconciling this clear statement of Jesus about the nature of Satan from the get-go, the, the difficulty is philosophical and a theological nature, and it usually stems from this, from our understanding of the perfection as we perceive perfection. Uh, and uh, and people also don't want to make God an author of sin. And they say, look, when God created all things, when he created heavens and earth and he create, uh, finished the creation, he said, he looked at the creation and he said, very good. So this pronouncement, very good, uh, for people presents this difficulty. I mean, if Satan was crooked, if he was evil from the beginning, then that's not good. And therefore, it wouldn't have been, uh, you know, it wouldn't have been honest of God to say that everything was good when in fact it was not. You see this uh, difficulty, and it's, it's more of a, again, a philosophical and some preconceived notions of what the perfection means. Yes, everything was created perfect, but unto a purpose. So for the purposes for which a thing or a created being was created, to serve that particular purpose, it was very good from the beginning. And also, there's um, when you consider, again, another clear statement uh, in, um, in the book of Proverbs, Proverbs 16, verse 4, which says that uh, the Lord hath made all things for himself, even the the evil or the wicked one unto the day of evil. However it goes, it's almost verbatim that I'm quoting, but let's, uh, let's check that out. It's Proverbs 16, verse 4. The Lord hath made all things for himself, yea, even the wicked for the day of evil. So this verse makes it clear that uh, the Lord has created all things. He's made all things, even the, the, the wicked, for the day of evil. So for his purposes, it was good, subserving to his greater redemptive purposes to glorify his name in our salvation. So the, the point, I mean, I made a longer, much longer video in Russian for my Russian-speaking audience explaining these things, and I don't think that's such a hot issue among my English-speaking audience. Uh, most of you guys are sovereign grace uh, believers, and uh, you don't have a problem with the understanding that um, God has his own holy hands for all things, and he can create them as he please. And uh, also, there's this statement in the book of Job, somewhat enigmatic, but I think it's in uh, Job 26, uh, 13, that his hand hath made a crooked serpent. Or a flee, a fleeing serpent. The uh, passage is not crystal clear, but again, the suggestion is that the Lord hath made this crooked serpent. Now, the serpent appears as already crooked in the third chapter of the book of Genesis, right? So we don't know. So the speculations must stop at this point. So, and it's not very edifying when we talk. Well, how come and and. Uh, can that, um, when that happened, I mean, the fall of Satan. There's an, another problem, a metaphysical problem with the fall of Satan. If he was 
actually the seal of perfection and he was that perfect then how come he fell see david says uh in uh i can't find it now but uh as i was reading in the second samuel that the lawlessness proceeds he quoted this ancient proverb it was actually the oral tradition apparently among the jews that the lawlessness proceeds from the lawless and this is the biblical principle the lawlessness proceeds or comes out from those who are already lawless otherwise it is very difficult to explain the appearance of evil if the person who does this evil act is perfectly good it is a huge problem so i'll i'll stop here I, i'm not going to say any anything more on on the subject but uh just to stimulate your further thinking and reading scriptures but i think if we consider that even the pronouncement of god again after he was done with the first creation when he said that everything is very good that for the purpose for which god created it okay even for the day of evil therefore it was very good everything that god is doing is very good unto his holy ends all right so that's uh what i wanted to speak on uh, briefly may god bless you all and uh, hopefully talk to you soon next time